What's going on guys, my name is Zach or Optic Tubar and I'm bringing you guys another After Effects tutorial. This tutorial is on color correction and I'm going to be showing you guys what I usually do when I color correct my footage. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've already imported some footage and of course if you want to use this footage as well you can download it in the description. So what I usually do when it comes to color correction is I do it in a pre-composition and I always pre-compose my footage whether it's a clip or a cinematic. I would take it and drag it into a new composition. I've already done that, but as you can see, it opens up in a new composition, and then I would do all my color correction inside of here. And then of course, you can take that clip into the main composition and you're good to go. Another thing that I do is I always do my color correction on an adjustment layer. So if I go under layer, new adjustment layer, and the shortcut is control alt Y. And the reason I always do it on an adjustment layer is because you want the color correction not only to affect the footage, but you want it to affect anything that, that you add to the footage, including like, you know, some text or some of the, you know, other visual effects that you want to do. You want it to affect all of it, not just the footage. So that's what an adjustment layer does. It, it affects everything that is beneath the adjustment layer. So if I had the footage above the adjustment layer, adjustment layer wouldn't affect the footage, but below it, it would. Another thing I should probably mention is that I use a outside third-party plugin called Magic Bullet Looks for a lot of my color correction. You can probably find it on YouTube or whatever, but uh, I recommend picking it up because it is a great color correction tool. It's really easy to use, but you can also achieve all the color correction that you really need inside of After Effects with the effects that are built into it. So let me show you what you can do with color correction. I have this comp that I already did before this tutorial. And I've got three different color corrections. So I've got this dark color correction that turns this, this skate park a little bit creepier and uh, a little more action-y. So let me go ahead and turn it on. You can see the difference that it made. It desaturated a lot, darkened it up a lot, added some red into the shadows. So before and after. And all of that color correction was done inside of After Effects without the, the third-party plugin. Here is the same type of color correction, but using Magic Bullet looks. Now it is slightly different in, in some aspects, I didn't do it exactly the same, but it shows that you can do color correction without third-party plugins. So now let me go ahead and show you how you can build that look yourself. So I'm going to go back to the other comp. In my adjustment layer, I can press enter and rename this to Dark CC. And from there you can just select the layer, go under effect, and you can see that there's a whole color correction menu list. So I'm not going to be going over all of these obviously, but they are there for you to use and mess around with. So one big one that is really useful in almost any situation is curves. So here it is, I'm going to apply it. And inside of curves what you can do is actually add points and adjust the uh, tonality of your clips and the other colors in the clips as well. So what this basically represents is down here is the shadows and the darkest points and then up here is the brightest points. And so if you drag the brightest point darker you can see it takes all the highlights and makes them sort of grayish. But if I bumped up the darker portions lighter you can see it lifts up the shadows. So that way you can really achieve what you're going for. So for the dark color correction, I obviously wanted to darken it up a bit. So what I did is just added a point and dragged it down around the shadows. And by the way, if you want to get rid of points, you can just click and drag it off. Or you can click this button and it'll reset it. And so another thing I wanted to do is if you go into the channel and go to the red channel, you can either take out the red from everything. So from the midtones, you can see it gets greenish blue. Or you can do it just from the shadows, or just from the highlights, or both. You can add multiple points. So that's what I'm going to do is sort of create a S curve. So we're already starting to get that dark greenish blue tint. And then maybe under the green channel, I'm going to universally drop it down a bit. So something about that. Another thing I should mention is that every monitor is displayed differently. And if you want to make sure that your monitor is actually displaying what you're seeing correctly, let me go ahead and minimize this for a second. If you right click on the desktop on Windows 7 and go to personalize and go into the display section, there's a 
a section right here called calibrate color and if you click that it'll uh, actually guide you through I don't know this is a little bit off screen here we go it'll actually guide you through some steps to make sure that your color is accurate I'm not gonna do it because I already did it but just if you do that you can make sure that your color is actually represented correctly alright so we got a pretty cool look using just curves inside of After Effects but the problem is that it's still really saturated you can see that there's this really gross red and this really bright gross yellow and this blue up here so there's an effect that you can use and you don't have to use this effect but I uh, recommend it it's called let's see I think it's it's under color correction for sure it's called vibrance down here at the bottom and if you bring down the vibrance you can see it sort of takes away <laughs> the vibrance incidentally of the clip and you also have a saturation slider which will universally desaturate it and you can see we've already achieved a much better look so this is without vibrance this is with vibrance now of course if you wanted a vibrant clip you could drag it in the other direction and make it more vibrant but of course then it starts to look really gross with the oversaturation it also makes a difference on which order you apply your effects because if I apply this the uh, vibrance first you can see it changes very slightly but it does change the way that it behaves because it's going to desaturate the clip first and then apply all that color thing that we did before so you may prefer it this way but I actually prefer it this way it's a more universally desaturated look now let me show you what you can use inside of magic bullet looks so I'm gonna head and turn off the adjustment layer so we're back to our original clip and make a new adjustment layer and apply magic bullet looks now magic bullet looks has its own separate interface so if you press the edit button it's going to bring you into that interface now it comes with a bunch of these cool scopes and stuff that you can uh, actually see and adjust the color to make it perfect but since this is a color duty clips you don't really have to worry about that just make it look the way that you want it to look but they've also got some pretty cool presets here and I don't recommend that you use them and just leave them how they are but there's no there's no shame in using a preset and then adjusting it to get it the way that you want it to look so you can see that they've got some pretty cool presets and of course they're going to need a lot of adjusting to to work but you get the idea they have all sorts of different tabs for them too and uh, there's some pretty interesting ones in there I'm going to show you guys how to make the the same look that we just did in After Effects inside of here so to build that look if you hover over the tools icon it opens up your tools and you've got uh, different tabs down here for the different tools so the first thing I'm going to do is we talked about the gross yellows here and the really gross reds that that really hurt the look that we're going for. So let's go ahead and get rid of those. And a really awesome way to do that inside of this program is using the range saturation effect. So go ahead and double click. It will apply that effect. And what we can do is to decrease the saturation from the shadows. So it will uh, control the saturation separately between the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So if I decrease them from the shadows to, let's say, I don't know, 15%, you can see that it really gets rid of that. Maybe I can go even farther down to 0%. And you can see if you press the, uh, the backslash, I think, uh, it's the button right above enter. You can see the before and after. Or you can also just press this power button here. So you can see it really got rid of that yellow here. And it did pretty good on the red. Maybe we can take down the mid-tone saturation a bit more just really desaturate it and take away the life out of it alright looks pretty good so magic bullet looks also has the curves adjustment which we talked about in after effects it's a little bit different but it works pretty much the same so I could you know darken the shadows a bit more just overall darken it up a bit maybe even bump up the highlights a bit to give it a nice contrast and I'm going to apply the range saturation after the curves and it works the same way it does in After Effects. It goes from left to right. So in this case, the curves is applied first and then the range saturation. So just keep that in mind. I'm actually going to desaturate the highlights a bit more. To just give it a desaturated look in general. So if I go back under my tools, there's also a three-way color corrector, which is pretty cool. 
you can adjust the colors of the highlights, midtones, and shadows separately like you can in curves in these uh, color channels, but it's just a different way to look at it. So I could, you know, add some blue to the highlights, maybe some reddish to the midtones, and maybe some dark blue to the shadows. This is all very subtle adjustments. You don't want to go too far because then it, it just, you know, looks awful. I recommend that you guys color correct based off of the song and feel that you guys are editing to. So if you want a hardcore edit, you're not going to want colorful color correction. But of course, if you're editing to like a dub steppy drum and bass or something along those lines, you're not going to want like this sort of thing, which is very dark and grungy. So there's a whole bunch of other tools in here, like the warm and cool, which universally adjust the color. And of course, you want to be subtle, like I said before with this. I'm going to just delete that. And we go ahead and start to build the same look. There's also some, some other things in the other tabs, like a film grain effect, uh, which is nothing to do with color correction, really, but it just sort of stylizes the footage. And you've got all sorts of other tools. Chromatic Aberration is actually a pretty cool one if you apply that and you uh, pump up these numbers a bit. What it does is actually, towards the edges here, it starts to RGB split like it would if it was a really, uh, really bad footage, like uh, damaged footage. So if I exaggerate this a bunch, you can see it really RGB splits it towards the edges, which can be pretty cool. And uh, obviously you want to be subtle with it, like I said before, but you know, if I left it like this, it actually looks pretty cool, but I'm going to actually delete it because that's not what I'm going for. Swing tilt is another cool one. I don't think it works in this situation, but what it does is it blurs the top and bottom and then you can have these sliders and it will focus on what this line is. So, you know, if I put the line up here, and then bumped up the blurriness, you can see it only shows this part. This part is in focus. Um, but if you make it more subtle, let me reset this. If you make it more subtle and, you know, remove it a bit, it just sort of draws the attention to the center of the screen a bit. And uh, you can change that or whatever. It just adds a blur. You can also do this inside of After Effects, like I said, just add a blur and then add a mask to it. Um, and I actually prefer it that way, but I'm just showing you guys some other things. Uh, the edge softness is similar to the swing tilt, except for it does it in a circular motion or a circular pattern. And then you have vignette, which is the same as the edge softness, but instead of blurring it out, it actually darkens it. And you can adjust the strength of this. You can adjust the fall off and uh, the spread. So let me go ahead and finish off this look that I'm working on. I think I'm going to decrease the reds from the shadow. Maybe increase them in the highlights just a touch. And in the greens, maybe decrease them from the shadows as well. So we have a bluish sh shadow. And actually in the RGB, I think I uh, darkened it up a little too much. So it's really a, a sort of check and balance and you, you go back and adjust things until you get what you want. Let me delete this vignette too. And so when you're finished, go ahead and press finished and it's gonna update and apply the effect. So here we have the magic bullet color correction and we have the after effects color correction. They're pretty similar and you can really achieve the same thing, uh, but it just depends on what you prefer to use. And of course, if you wanna use magic bullet looks, you could also uh, combine the effects so I could go to effect color correction and go down to vibrance and uh, you know combine the the use of looks and the effects in color in, in after effects which is something I do a lot and uh, yeah those are the tools that I use um, go ahead and mess around with all the other options that are available I can't really cover them all so I hope you guys enjoyed this color correction tutorial and I hope you guys understand color correction a little bit more if you want to see some other color correction tutorials, maybe one on a colorful color correction, just leave a comment. Don't forget to make sure that your your monitor is displaying color correctly using the uh, calibrate color thing that I showed you. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed.
catch you all in the next video.